Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, I'm working on a project on the 1917 Vulcan Ironworks steam locomotive out of the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. In a previous episode, we pulled the steam chest off of one of the cylinders on the locomotive because uh, up here where the valve rod goes in, there's some up, up a gland here for packing this. It had cracked, the casting had cracked. It was actually a repair that had been done previously had cracked. And uh, we're gonna be making another repair to this to try to get it back in operation, to get it back on its feet. And ultimately, I think we're gonna try to make a whole new part here. But in the meantime, we need to get the locomotive back up and running. Uh, this is not under, there, there is steam pressure inside the steam chest here, uh, but the, the brake does not go into the cavity where the, the, the steam is. So we, we really don't have any steam escaping. Uh, but this is not good, what we got here. I'll zoom in and show you here in just a minute. Uh, but we're going to get in here and braze this up. So this had been repaired in the past. It had been uh, welded with nickel rod, uh, which I'm not a huge fan of. I know a lot, there's a lot of controversy, a lot of different opinions about welding cast iron. I've had best luck with brazing, and that's what we're going to go back to here. This had been done with nickel rod in the past. Uh, and... This repair had lasted at least 25 years, so I'm not gonna knock it too hard, but um, with brazing or with welding cast iron, typically I have found that, that it just makes the cast iron too brittle when you try to melt that root, root material in a welding process. With brazing, you don't get it that hot, uh, hot enough to melt the cast iron. You just get it hot enough for the braze to stick to it, chemically bond to it, and um, that, really makes a big difference in how well they hold up. I've just had better luck with brazing than uh, welding, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's zoom in here, show you this uh, nasty uh, crack in here, and start the process of getting this prepped, ready for brazing, and then get it uh, brazed up. So this square box on the front of this has a rod that goes through it. This is the valve rod that slides back and forth and moves the, uh, the, the, the valve inside of the steam chest that diverts the steam to either the um, in putting the steam into the uh, into the cylinder or exhausting the steam out the smokestack, depending on its position. Uh, this basically is just putting the the steam where it needs to go and, and releasing it where it needs to go. This box here is a packing box. So you take some packing material and put it in there. There's a circular tube that goes up in there. It has a flange that goes up on these two screws and you tighten that up and you press it in as the packing wears down. You just tighten it up and as it wears down, you can put more packing in there. There, The steam can come out around this rod. So that packing is basically keeping the steam pressure from escaping around the rod. And what's happened here is uh, the, the pressure from pushing on this and then pulling on this part here, it is just pulled across the top here and separated it. And like I said previously, this had been broken before. Originally, the, 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 the studs were on the side here and they screwed up in here and this broke right there where those studs went in there. And you can see where they had repaired it previously. And when they did repair it, and while they did use the uh, nickel rod rather than brazing, which I'm not a fan of, one thing that I think they did a good job on is that they actually welded a plate onto this all the way around to give it some strength and give something for these screws to go into. And that seemed to hold together pretty well. But we got a break. You can see it's kind of cracked right up along the seam across here, all the way across the back, and pretty much says the same thing on the other side. Um, we're gonna have to get in here and grind all that out. So anyway, that's what we're dealing with. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can start grinding out the bad stuff and getting ready to put some braids back in there, hopefully to hold it together for until we can get a new part made. So the first thing I want to do is see if I can kind of bend this back up in here. You can see where it has pulled out. And I'm just going to take a big clamp and we're just going to kind of come in here and kind of squeeze on this, see if we can move that back in. I want to kind of grind it where it's going to be once we get through with everything and try to get that more or less back where it belongs. I reposition those clamps from the bottom and that just gives me plenty of clearance in here from my grinder. So I think I can do most of my grinding here without having to take these clamps off. Probably just leave them on for the entire brazing project. 
process as well uh, once, now that we kind of got it more or less back where it goes. So I'm going to get a grinder out with a grinding disc on it. And, you know, we just want to get as much of that crack ground out as we can down to good material uh, so that we can braise it back up. All right, guys, we're going to start grinding. Got on gloves, got on dust mask, got on face shield, got a ceramic grinding disc in here that usually does a pretty good job grinding this stuff out. And we're just going to see if we can get it down to some good material. <laughs> seven inch grinding disc here this one's not ceramic but hopefully it'll get the job done and hopefully we can get down in there where we need to be All right, I don't want to go any deeper in here for fear that I'm going to break through into the um, packing chamber in there. I got this beat out pretty good around here, but uh, I'm going to need to get in here on these sides where that crack comes out to the face. That's going to be tough to get into. I may use a small grinder for that one. Well, guys, I think we got our work cut out for us. Uh, I've ground out as much as I feel comfortable grinding out around that. <sighs> That's going to be a pain to braise. It's a lot easier to braise something if it's flat when you got all this topography that's wanting to run in different directions. But we'll just have to get in there and work at it and go slow and get her done. I think I'm going to take this back out to the museum and, and braise it out there. Uh, and then we'll have it out there when, to cool down. So that's my game plan. I'm going to pack it back up and we'll take it back out there and embrace it. And we'll bring you guys along back out at the museum, guys. And uh, we're going to get in here and start more braise up these ends first with the hope that this will kind of serve a little bit as a dam to hold my braise in as I come across this top. So I'll do this side. We'll flip it over to the other side. I've got it sitting on some two by fours. We've got this uh, crease in here on either side. I got a fire blanket in here just to hopefully keep the heat off those two by fours, keep them from burning. We'll start out by just taking a rosebud torch and getting everything hot. And uh, once we get everything hot, we'll start brazing. So uh, as I normally do with this kind of stuff, we're gonna heat up the whole part. We're not just gonna heat up um, the end down here. I'm gonna try to get heat as much around this as I possibly can so that we don't have a heat sink in one place pulling every, all the heat out and also so that it expands relatively at the same rate. Uh, obviously this end's gonna be hotter than the other end, but we want to have heat throughout. So I get my rosebud, let me get dressed here for the occasion and uh, we will start brazing. All right, here we go, guys. We got our rosebud going, and we're just going to start heating things up. All 
right, we're getting pretty hot here. I think we're about ready to start adding some braise in. And uh, I'm going to start this using this rosebud, see how it goes. Um, I really want to keep as much heat in here as I can. I may go to a smaller rosebud to see how this blows this around. I'm going to start by getting some down here in the bottom of this. I'm going to switch over to a smaller rosebud. Now, this end's going to be a lot hotter than this end. We got to go 180 degrees, so that's got to come towards you. Hot. Come on. Move all over. Thank you. All right. Alright, I got it flipped over. We're going to go ahead and get this end kind of uh, going, see how this goes. All right, I think we're ready for another move here. We're gonna roll it around again and uh, see if we can start filling in some of the top side here.
All right, guys. If you want to call it quits. Well, I was real happy with how this brazed. Um, it actually went easier and better than I thought it would. And I think we got a nice, um, nice braze job in there. I got it all wrapped up in the blanket right now. We're gonna let this cool down real nice and slow. That really helps with uh, preventing cracking in there or anything like that, if you can just let it cool super, super, super slow. So uh, we're just gonna go off and leave this overnight, come back uh, tomorrow and uh, probably do a little grinding on it and hopefully be ready to go back on the train. That's the game plan. Guys, we let this cool off over there at the museum overnight, and um, I went by this morning and picked it up and actually brought it back to my shop. I just wanted to get it in here and get it cleaned up and just make sure everything looked good, and it does. I'm, I'm very happy with the results here. Uh, we basically got all that crack all brazed up all the way around. Everything has been repaired, and um, I feel pretty confident that this should hold up pretty well. Um, you know, is it perfect? No, I'd much rather have a new casting. And ultimately, that's going to be our goal is to get a new casting in here. But uh, I think that this will be a suitable repair until such time that we can do that. Uh, again, like we talked about previously, this uh, crack, this repair did not go into the steam chest itself. It's just on this flange. And all this flange's purpose is, is that packing around this rod uh, to keep the steam in the steam chest. And it's just the pressure on it where it had cracked originally, had rebroken. And uh, I, I, like I said, I feel like this will hold up indefinitely. It's probably not a forever repair. Could be. Uh, but uh, based on the last one, you know, it's probably at some point in time going to fail again. But the game plan there here is, is that we will get a new casting made and uh, have a replacement for this at some time in the foreseeable future. But again, happy with the braze drop. I think that turned out great. And uh, that should hold up just fine. And just a quick look on the other side here. Again, it goes all the way around and kind of down this up piece here. So we've got it all brazed up. Happy with how it looks. Well, guys, I think that's going to be a wrap on this episode. We got this repair done. I think this is all ready to go back on. We'll do a video showing us reinstalling it and making sure we don't run into any problems. I don't anticipate there being any. Um, but we will get this back on. And like I've said, I think this repair is adequate. I think it will hold up just fine. But the end goal is I think we're going to try to recast this, remachine a new steam chest and probably go ahead and do a new yoke in here as well. And uh, in fact, I'm probably just going to go do one for both sides so that we can get new stuff on to the locomotive and get our wear so everything is, uh, is refreshed and ready to go and last for a lot longer. I will show you this, guys, just real quickly. This is a blueprint, a copy of the blueprint for the steam chest and yoke right here. And when I say blueprint, this was originally blue. I took it into Photoshop and turned it into black and white because I didn't want to use that much blue ink in my printer. But this came from the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. Stephen Jacobs up there, who is a volunteer at the museum that has been spending a lot of time scanning in their collection, the original blueprints from the Vulcan Iron Works, getting them cataloged and getting them organized. And he has been a tremendous uh, asset to our museum and that we, I have on multiple occasions sent him emails and said, hey, Stephen, can you try to find um, you know, whatever part we're looking for needing to make on the locomotive? And he has used his magic and gone and pulled the stuff out. Uh, much of what they have right now is not cataloged. It is they're still in the process of doing this. It's going to take them years to go through all this stuff. But um, they have been really good at being helpful and being able to dig some of this stuff up. They do have a charge for this. You know, they don't do it for free, at least not to the public. They do actually help out some museums. And since we're a museum, they were able to help us out with some stuff. But uh, they do have a lot of those records up there. And while I said it's not all disco 
type in your locomotive information and up pops a collection of blueprints. There's a lot of legwork to be done. And Stephen, thank you so much for your efforts in doing that. That's gonna be invaluable when we start making the patterns to have new parts cast. So uh, anyway, that's, that'll probably be a project for down the road. This will get us going. This will keep us going, hopefully, until we can uh, get the new parts made. And with that, guys, that's going to be a wrap, as always. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments, always greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon up there to get more our notifications when new videos are posted. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, with that, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.